All right, guys, there is always a period, or in my case, I'm talking about myself, there is always a certain type, not type, a certain stage of the development of the model that you are starting to think, but what can I do next? Because I can do, for example, I can start doing the belt, I can start doing some straps on the legs, I can start doing some detailing on the helmet, but I'm a little bit concerned because I don't completely approve how the whole thing works. It's relatively okay, but I'm not completely happy. So, in order to continue and to do it, you have to just do something. It doesn't matter what. For example, do the helmet stuff or uh, do this thing here, which is holding the, the, the two portions of the cape together. The cape itself, we are noticing it's not symmetrical because in this case, it's coming very much down in this area here or overall his body is kind of tilted a little bit uh, which will be nice if we do this at some point to tilt the body a little bit but let's see if we can by the way we, we always can let me tilt it now why because you see this uh, let's remove the symmetry of the cape we don't need it anymore we can leave this on and put this a little bit down and a little bit back. Then I will go to the body itself. The body now, I don't need it to be symmetrical anymore. So I will press R and go a little bit and control R and smooth it. And then, yeah, I remeshed it. And then I will kind of start without symmetry to do some things. Maybe I I can move this down and back a little bit more. So it will be more interesting if he's not exactly symmetrical. One of his arms is more upward, the other one is more down, the shoulders I mean, and stuff like this. This will be actually better and a little bit more interesting, I think. So this area I'm putting down. Uh, the shirt itself Mm, we also don't need the symmetry right now for the shirt, so I will disable the symmetry, pull this up where it was, because I pulled it down from here, but now it's okay. Maybe a little bit uh, backwards. This shoulder, by the way, should go forward. It should definitely go a little bit forward, uh, because the shoulder, as I told you already, let me disable the cape here. Where is the cape? Let's say I select the cape and I want it to be cape. Not in Cyrillic. Okay, cape, where is it? Now it's here. So I disable it just to be able to see what's happening. Okay, we see that we have problems. I will go to sculpt mode and start just pulling and pushing this shoulder. Mm, the idea is that with this position of the arm, most of the shoulder is, or maybe all the shoulder, is coming forward. It's coming forward. So there is almost no shoulder here left on the back. I mean, almost all the shoulder has tilted forward, which can happen. Let me just try it on myself. Yeah, most of your shoulder is here. You see all of the shoulder here. And uh, from the back, you see a little bit of the shoulder. When it's normal, you see front, you see side, and from the back also you have some shoulder. But when it's like uh, rotated that much forward, then the shoulder rotates also with the arm. So we have to take this into consideration. We cannot uh, just make it whatever we can, whatever we want, or however we want. Although we can, in this case, because there will be sleeves, and those sleeves will allow us to do a little bit, you know things that are not exactly to do the things a little bit you know however we want not so realistically maybe but overall I like it now I don't like this muscle here it's too pronounced probably so I will smooth it a little bit it was too pronounced we don't like those muscles to be extremely pronounced and uh, the muscles, their connections, and their <coughs> how they are 
aligned and how they are like, for example, this, you know, the line that uh, separates the muscle from the other muscles or the muscle from the other tissues should be not just pushed, you know, it should smooth here, smooth here, just uh, to have it interestingly made. It, it shouldn't be just pushed. Everything, you know, you should create your own way of making this. I'm not saying my way of making those uh, muscles and the tissues is the best. I've seen people who are spending obviously more time than me and they are making them pretty well. So yeah, I guess you need to just develop your own way. You don't think that uh, you will be good in anatomy for week, two weeks, five months even. No, it takes way more time than that and way more practice. And these days, judging by myself, by my uh, kind of mental mental state, um, I'm pretty lazy these days. I don't want to do anything and I'm just, uh, I have to do the course. I have to stay focused a little bit, but I'm thinking about other things. Uh, you know, they stole my car and uh, no, my wife's car, but it's, yeah, it's similar. I also paid for it, so yeah, it's not good. Some things are happening. But you have to concentrate. You have to see what is making you happy. If sculpting, practicing, all those things are making you happy, don't leave them behind. Even if you have problems, which by the way, stealing uh, your car is not the biggest issue that you can have. There are way, way worse things that can happen. But, you know, that's an example because it happened to me. Um, so we have to stay focused or we will not be able to do anything. We will not be able to progress. Progressing is to stay focused and to do, you know, to do those things. For example, how I do it. Uh, and I'm talking about some things while I'm working on the model because I'm just adjusting things, uh, not as important. I can tell you. Uh, of course, what I'm doing, and it's it's pretty obvious, but yeah. I'm just trying to achieve better result, inflating here and there, mostly moving with the grab brush. Here, this is the front shoulder, then it's the side shoulder here, and all the shoulder is coming to the point between the biceps and the brachialis muscle. The biceps is this front muscle, and the brachialis is this muscle next to it because there is no only biceps and triceps in the in the body you have brachialis you have brachioradialis um mostly those muscles yeah on the on the upper arm you have mostly biceps and triceps of course and brachialis but there are other muscles too sometimes not always <laughs> yeah of course always so i pushed this shoulder down and now I regret it a little bit because I need this shoulder to be a shoulder. So it needs to have volume. If I push it just down and I don't give it the volume, it will be bad. I will also push the arm down by just moving it with a very big grab brush from further away and um, with very small increments. Very small movements, then see what happens, then small movement, then see what happens. If you try to move it quickly in one swipe, you will probably make a grave mistake and it will be like like this, for example, you know. It's not gonna be good. So that's why. Small movement, see if it's okay uh, and measure it if you can. I mean, yeah. No, don't measure it. Measuring usually is not something that you have to do. You have to try to um, to develop your artist artistic eye. Now again, here I will smooth because I think I have wrong things. So from the side shoulder here, we have this, which is the bone. And you can see it in yourself. The bone is coming from below the shoulder here. And you can touch it, basically. And it's coming to the pinky side. So that's what I'm doing, this bone. And then it will separate those muscles 
of the forearm from the upper muscles here. So yeah, that's a little bit of a bummer. Many people are having very, very difficult time doing forearm. Which is normal because the forearm is not as easy. It's kind of complex because it's rotate, it rotates and it changes uh, its position when it rotates. But when you learn the muscles, basics of the muscles, and when you do it every time, you will at some point kind of be able to think where the position of the muscles will be. You know, I will not be able to tell you exactly where the position of each muscle should be and stuff. It's it's not, um, you know, tothable, we may say. Uh, I have Anatomy for Sculptures, not Anatomy for Sculptures. This is a book. Anatomy for Sculptures is a book, very good book for anatomy, by the way. One of the best. Uh, but I have Superhuman Anatomy. And um, it's a human anatomy, basically. So it will teach you just basics of the anatomy of the male. I have a female anatomy course, though. But yeah, if you want, you can check them out. Uh, they are pretty useful, I think. People are liking them. Should be good. Now let's see the cape. Let's uh, put it on and then adjust it on our model. Yes. I always like my model from the beginning to start looking good. If it doesn't start looking good from the beginning, I lose the will to do and to work on it, which is very bad. That's why I'm trying, trying here to adjust some things, uh, this and that. It's not, you know, It's not easy, especially as I said in the beginning, I like it to look good, which uh, not always is super possible since in the beginning you don't have many of the details, you don't have many of the things connected to each other, like fingers are not connected to the palm and all those things, when we connect them, it will start to look a little bit better. Now it looks more like a doll, not like a real stylized creature or human. It looks like a doll a little bit, but once we connect the palms with the fingers, we will not be able to change the pose of them very easily because they will be uh, one object. And especially how close they are now to each other, they will combine themselves into one mesh, which will not be the best. If you're doing this for, for example, for a game model or something, I will highly suggest you will do it just in typos and the fingers to be a little bit separated like this from each other, maybe a little bit folded, but not too much. And then when you combine them, it will be completely easier, easy to just combine them without a problem. But now it's not. Now let's see <coughs> the, the feet. I think the feet could be a little bit, uh, I mean, taller in this area. And this part could go like this. <clears throat> and we have to always imagine what exactly is this that we are doing now. Uh, is it a leather? Is it thin leather? In this case, it will never be thin uh, because we don't want it to be thin. If, if it's thin, it will be a difficult thing to 3D print it. So it's not going to be very thin. It will be pretty thick. But still, it's not exactly fur either. We will have fur probably on the cape. Let's do a little bit of a something, solidify on the cape. So I go to the cape and I just turn on solidify modifier and make it thick. So let's make the, the cape this thick, for example, just for now, just to see. And then we can put subdivision surface modifier and around three, then go to edge data of the solidify modifier, like we always do, crease inner, crease outer, and just make sure it looks relatively fine for now. Uh, the problem that I'm that I'm seeing here is uh, the look from the back. From the back, our character will look very boring because it's a big blob of uh, empty space with horns, which doesn't look very nice. So 
when 3D printed, this will be kind of bad for business, but we'll see. I may try to make this cape a little bit less boring, which always is my goal, I know. I know I may become a little bit boring, uh, saying all the time, boring, boring, but it's uh, just the way it is. It has to be unboring or not boring. We can push this here and here we can make the cape connect. This is the, the place where the cape connects to the other portion of the cape. It connects in the middle. It's not exactly in the middle in this case, but it should be more in the middle than, than I'm doing it because you see now here, you see the middle of his shirt and then this is a little bit on his left. So uh, probably I will make it a little bit on his left either. Now, uh, since I always jump from thing to thing, let's jump to make this kind of a reddish fabric below his belt. So uh, what? Uh, let's analyze the belt a little bit. So he has one big belt with caps on them, which is great. Now, on it, he has another belt, which has this big belt buckles here, which is great. But it's it's uh, much narrower, like at least double or half the thickness of the big belt. And then below this big belt, you have something like a fabric thingy, which is kind of uh, <clears throat> broken a little bit here. So I'm a little bit concerned about that, but let's see. Let's go to our camisa or shirt and let's select, let's try at least to select some of the shirts. So let me just double click. No, double click like, okay, I cannot double click like this. Okay, I will double click this, which will select this uh, row of polygons. And then I will control plus once or twice. Okay, twice is okay for now. And now we will do the same as we did with the, with the belt. So we will shift D to duplicate then right click to just leave it on where it is. Then we will P uh, selection to just get it away or separate it and then Alt Q uh, on it to select it. Sometimes if you don't, uh, if you don't um, increase it a little bit, it will be difficult to select it later. That's why I usually, I usually increase it in size. Uh, I don't need the upper row of polygons, so I will select a double click and delete faces and I told you but let's delete those two faces so I told you that if you want to select this row you click here or here yeah if you want to select the horizontal row you you click next to the vertical edge next to the vertical edge we'll select the horizontal row yeah that's the way it is vertical edge horizontal row but you will get used to it. I mean, this requires just practice. It's not uh, something that's difficult or whatever. It's easy. Now here I will not use any symmetry because I see we don't need one. We don't need symmetry for this dress or cloth or whatever piece here it is. It will be just under our belt. Now let's see what's happening here. Select this. Okay, this is the back part. I will not delete it. I will just move it around. And from the back, it will not be as visible. So we are okay. I'm pressing Alt Z sometimes, as you could probably see. And I'm moving it around. Here. Yes. Yeah, I don't know if it's super visible from the back. We can check it out because we have the luxury to have the concept from the back too, which is great, of course. But other than that, I like to put a little bit more polygons on this thing in here. So let's go tab, control R in here, control R in here, and control R in here. And I can just move it around. This belt, of course, could be narrower, but it's not necessary. 
we also would want to have uh, folds in our shirt, folds in other places. But again, with folds, we have to be very, very careful. Folds, usually, I see people making folds. They're making them look very bad because they don't know how to make them. They don't have the practice. If you don't have the practice, um, you have to watch references a lot. Because the only way to learn how to make folds is to make folds from references. There is no other way. If you just try to do folds by from your head without the necessary experience, you will most likely fail and your folds will look horrendous. And I've seen that. It's not pretty. It's not pretty at all. So we have to be pretty careful about that. So, yeah, this thing is okay. Now, I always say now, probably it's something like a parasitic word. But whatever. Now, <laughs> I will select this. Um, what is this? The big belt. And we will make a small belt out of the big belt. I know. So, uh, while we are on edit mode, shift D, right click, S to scale it. And then we can scale it even down on the Z axis, move it here, and then P selection, Alt Q on it. And we are ready. This is our belt, the small one. Now, we have the small well, uh, belt, we have the big belt. The problem here that we will encounter, I'm pretty sure, will be the belt buckle because we actually cannot exactly see what it is. So we have to kind of imagine it, which could be a nice thing sometimes because it will require you to use your imagination, which should be fine. But if you don't have imagination, what do we do then? I don't know. Then we are screwed if we cannot use our imagination. Now, I'm thinking that the thumb of this arm should go a little bit this way. So it's more visible because the arm is not looking bad when it's kind of flush onto the body. But the thumb is looking bad because it's not visible. It's kind of inside the shirt, which is never a good thing. I mean, it's not never a good thing, but it's good to to have some of the thumb visible, let's say. It will be just a little bit more realistic. So that's why I'm pulling the thumb out of the question. <laughs> the question. Yeah, many people will say, Nico is talking about a lot of things. Sometimes he's not talking about what he's doing on the screen. Yeah, watch some other courses and you will see what uh, what is it. Uh, Nico is uh, trying to be funny. Yeah, I know. But he should not be boring at least. At least that. Hopefully he's not boring. That's the main thing. And... You know, some things are not to be explained. They are to be experienced. So I am strongly recommending you to, when you're watching this course, not just to watch it and eat popcorns. Not just to watch it and also watch while watching cat videos on YouTube or whatever. I recommend you to watch it and do it at the same time. Because this will be... Uh, most beneficial for you. And the courses are not the biggest price ever. You know, you've seen courses that are about $500 a course or something. My courses are around $20, even less. So it's not... Mm, it's not something to complain about that much. It's okay. I think I give you a lot of information and uh, also my goal with the courses is not only to give you technical information um, I'm also giving you some information from my experience as an artist as a 3d sculptor also I'm giving you some 
information about the way to think about things, which I think is important. But who knows? Let's try to do this thinking here. So what is this? This is some kind of a disc. And then there is some kind of a needle going through the disc. Yeah, it's it, we cannot exactly understand what's happening there. But we can try to do it by just going here, cylinder, adding a cylinder, uh, pressing tab, and then deleting most of the cylinder. So I delete everything. But this little circle in here is the only thing left from the cylinder. It's the only survivor. Uh, the, the rest are gone. I will rotate it and put it into position, which is the position will be, you know, are a little bit in the left of his left here. This will be the position for now. Now, I don't want this to be very thin here. It's a pretty thin thing, but we don't want that. We will do I insert inset inset and it's no control Z escape and control Z. And then I will press I, but my mouse should be a little bit away from, from the object. If it's inside, it's B. When it's away from the object, I can do this. And then I can pull it, let's say, G to move it up. Okay. And then I can delete with X this portion. And then we can put solidify, but pretty huge solidify. As I told you, if this is very thin, like the concept here, the 3D print will be bad for it. I want it to be pretty thick, so it will be good for 3D printing. At least that's my train of thought. I will put this portion of the cape above this portion, and then we will put this needle in the middle. Needle in the middle. Uh, needle in the middle. <laughs> I know, sometimes I'm trying to uh, entertain myself. I mean, that's why I'm, you know, uh, I'm trying to have fun. Uh, now, this cape, I think, should go a little bit more down on his chest. Not so much up. And this particular thing, I will go and put it down. But not with the sculpting tools, because it will most likely distort it. I will just try to do it here. So, in my case... This thing that is holding the cape in position is thicker than the concept. And it's also uh, not bigger, but thicker. Mostly thicker from every, every angle. I think this should be okay. Maybe we should make it bigger. Yeah, let's make it a little bit bigger. Uh, sometimes when you have this kind of things, it's... Better to make them a little bit bigger than a little bit smaller. Because a little bit smaller, they will lose their identity. We may say that, yeah. And we may say that and not be wrong, which will be great. Let's uh, try to do this kind of a needle thing here. I don't know. Uh, let's select one of the polygons. Shift D to duplicate it. And then this polygon should be our needle. Uh, I don't know how we, it will be the needle, but we'll see. So I will just e extrude this here and move it up i don't know but it's going below the i don't know we'll see then scale it and it's a needle right now this portion here i will move it in and this portion i will extrude it out a little bit and it's something like a needle of course i would like the whole thing i press l to select it to be rotated a little bit more like that. And then I will select the cape and try to adjust it. So it's kind of over and under and whatever. I'm not sure. Maybe it should go under like this. But over the needle. In the middle. Needle in the middle. Always. It should work at some point. Maybe we will think about it later. As I said, it's uh, good to put the things where they should be. And don't, not think about the detail too much. If you think about the detail too much, sometimes you will lose yourself into, into this. 
which is not a good thing. Now, for the cape itself, we will make some folds when the time comes and the cape will become much better than now. Now it's worst, I mean it's very badly uh, presented, but let me show you how we can do it. So we will uh, apply the subdivision modifier. Of course, before that we should apply the yeah, apply the subdivision and now I cannot go back. Why? Oops, I did it. Now it's uh, okay. I don't know why I couldn't go back, but I pressed Ctrl Z a couple more times and now I'm back. So we should apply first the solidify modifier and then the subdivision modifier. And then we will be able to put detail on the cape. But uh, let's see where we will do it, when we will do that, because uh, for now I told you we are trying to achieve some overall look and we need more things. We need those straps on the forearms, which means our forearms should be a little bit smaller because here you see, uh, they shouldn't be that big. I made them like a Popeye the Sailor Man, but they should be smaller probably. And also we need the sleeves here. And when we do those things, the rest will come probably. Okay, see you in the next one.